Hey guys, so this is going to be a getting started guide to East West. And if you're new to East West or you're just wondering what exactly is the Composer Cloud Plus or what exactly do I get with these libraries? And so we're going to get started with some simple stuff or the configuration. And in the next videos, we're going to dive into some of the libraries. Now, I already want you guys to comment and let me know if uh, there's anything specific you want me to cover, if there's anything specific, uh, I mean, like settings and whatever you want to learn about East West and you couldn't find, just let me know and I'll do my best to cover that in the next videos. And so let's get started. So our very first step is going to be iLock. And if you don't have iLock, that's the licensing system. and so I already have that activated, but if you got the serial number, you can just add that right here. You can go to licenses, redeem, activation code. You punch in the code and you get the product listed. Next, you're going to right click and select activate. And that's pretty much it. So next we have the installation center, and this is the program that will help you install all the libraries and manage their location, which is very important. I'm going to show you that. So first we have this menu right here, and there's a few things to, to note. First of all, of course, we have the about, we have the library directories. This is where all these libraries is going to be downloaded and installed. Very, very important because if you have several hard drives, maybe you're going to install some of the stuff on an external SSD drive, or you want to just manage the locations, that's where you do it. And you can add more locations and set the default to whichever you like. So that's very important. And also, if you're going to move around stuff, for example, you're, you're installing some of the products, some of the libraries on your uh, hard drive, but the most used ones you're going to put on SSD, you can move them around as you work and then you can relocate them. And the next item that is important here is that you can reinstall stuff and reinstall the Opus software, which I'm going to talk about in a moment because that's going to be our main player, the main way for you to play the library. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And so here, you can see all the different products, all the different libraries. And I have everything because I have the subscription. But if you just have a you know, single or maybe few libraries, then you only see what you have uh, activated. And so right now I have a few updates that I can run. I can click this update. It's going to update in the background. And everything else is installed and activated. So for each one, you will see that you have this little cogwheel and I can click that and get a menu with things that you can do. So I can see the directory where it, where it is uh, installed on my hard drive. Right? We have other things that you can do like locate or even uninstall. So if you don't have enough capacity on your hard drive, no problem. You can install a library, play with that, work with that, produce, and then uninstall. And the next time you need anything, again, install it back, and so on. So that's very important. Right. So we are ready to see what exactly do we get? How do we use all these libraries? So the way we use the East West libraries is by utilizing the Opus host and this comes as a standalone application which that's what i have right now and also as a plugin that you can use in your dough the cubase ableton whatever it is and so let's go through this real quick and in the next videos i'm going to dive in further now before we continue if you like this video hit the like button leave a comment with questions or anything and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to add more and more stuff just like this. So, first of all, we have few main views. So, th this is the browse view. 
This is where you can browse libraries. And we also have the play, which right now doesn't show anything because we don't have anything loaded, perform and mix. So everything is blank because we need to get something running. And now, very important tip. If you want to get things loaded fast and just be ready to play, you might want to click this quick load. And the difference is very significant. So when we are loading anything, normally the library will just load slowly, get all the different samples uh, in place and ready for you. And that might take a little bit of time. And if you're ready to compromise on that, you can hit the quick load and that will bring the library right away, ready for you, but those samples be loaded as you play them. So there might be a little bit of a glitch and hiccups along the way, but once those uh, samples loaded, you're good to go. So I'm going to use the quick load for this demonstration, but you should play with that and see what works for you. And I'm going to get something very simple like the cello and already you see that we have different categories. So we have long solo, long short legato and key switches. I'm going to go with the key switches because that will give us a, a lot of things to talk about. And you can also see all the explanations and a little bit of help right on the top here to get you going to understand what it is that we are loading here. So as you just click this, you get that particular library loaded on the left panel. And you can see that right here. So we have the solo cello uh, and I've used the quick load. So the samples are not really loaded. I'm gonna play something and they, they will get loaded. So where exactly is the library? Where is the instrument? That is in the play panel. So I'm gonna go into play and here you can see everything is ready for you with all the different options. And we have moods on the top here. These are actually kind of uh, presets and not really different samples. Then we have performance portamento, legato, and so on. And we have sensitivity of the keyboard, and we have some MIDI controls. Then we have the envelope, and on the right side we have stereo doubling, we have the tuning, we have reverb settings that we can select right here. Lots of stuff to do, right? And finally, we also have microphones which is very, very cool and very important for the sound that you're looking for. So uh, not always you will want all these microphones to play together. And if you'll click on the bottom right here, we have the mic positions. You'll see where exactly our mics are. And you can see the close, uh, close V, mid, mid V and main, and they're all designated right here, you can see exactly where they're located. And we also have the articulations because this library is with key switches and it has different articulations. You can just click those uh, articulations and or you can program that in MIDI and you can see which uh, key switch is really used. And that is also right here on the left in the keyboard. So. Next, very um, useful is the keyboard um, assignment. So you can see that the light or the, the white keys are your play range and all the gray is just areas that don't play that instrument.
right? Of course, there are more things that you can do, and there are also more windows or more panels to check. So we have the perform. This is where you can see the instrument in a kind of a, a condensed and very focused way for you because that is very important if you're using several uh, libraries at a time. So let's go back to browse and get something else. These, these are the cellos. I'm going to get a violin uh, with the key, key switches. And instead of double clicking, I'm going to drag that right below. And now I have two instruments. But very important is the fact that we have different MIDI channels for each. So we have one and two. And that is something I'm going to show you in a later video where you can have one instant of Opus and each of those instruments will listen to different MIDI tracks and then you don't have to load separate Opus plugins. So I'm going to set this to Omni on both of them, meaning I only have one keyboard and I'm going to play that and they're going to play together. But let's go back to the perform view. And now you see the point of this because the cellos are in a different register. They have different range over the keyboard and the violins are higher in, in the register. So that is very important for you to know what exactly you're playing and what library is set to what key ranges as well if you're doing this live or maybe you're scoring. So next, we also have the mix tab. And here you can see the different instruments that we have. So I have the solo cello on the left and the solo violin on the right. And for each one, I have all the channels for the microphones. And you, what you can see also is that we have these little pluses here and we're going to go through that. So I can go and click the plus and get a whole range of effects and you don't have to use external plugins to shape the sound even further. So there's a lot of choices right here. And these are the four main views that we have. Again, we have the browser, we have the play, we have the perform, and we have the mix. But for each one, you might have different settings and different sub options. So if I go into the perform, you see that we have the zones, we have all instances, it's a, a different way to look at things and the MIDI tools. So the MIDI tools are MIDI effects that you can apply like a quarter or glider, uh, humanizer and so on. So I can just use this quarter and I can generate chords as I play. Right, so I'm playing a single key, but the library will sound as I played, as if I played a chord. That is the quarter, and I can click this menu right here and remove that one. And so now let's go back to our browser and see what else we have. So as you can see, we have all kinds of different libraries, and some of them will have different views or different user interface. I'll show you something. So if I'll go into our, uh, um, let's, let's pick something interesting. We'll get uh, voices of uh, soul. I'm going to go with this one sustains or yeah, let's go with the phrases. So I'm loading that one. And I'm going to remove this. And now in the play, you'll see that we have different phrases uh, and different articulations set to our uh, key switches. And again, you can see that the user interface is completely different. It looks something else, right? 
But there are some similarities. You can still see that we have the sensitivity and the system settings right here. We have the envelope, we have the stereo doubling, we have the reverb, we have the microphones, and so on. So it's not completely different. And that is pretty much what you get with East-West basic um, you know, ideas. So we have the installation phase, you have the um, iLock, then you get the Opus, which is really important because that's the host for everything. We can browse and select all these instruments, which are just amazing and mind-blowing. It's an endless, endless playground for sound. And finally, you can play and shape the sound even further in the perform, in the mix, with the plugins and MIDI tools. So I really hope that was helpful for you to just get a peek into East West and what's inside, what's in the box. And I'll see you guys in the next video on that series. Thanks and bye bye.